Thank you, Cindy. I love Christmas time for the music. I was playing it at home yesterday when Cheryl wasn't there, so she wasn't there to listen to it. <laughs> what? It's your turn to sing. Let's stand. We sing Wonderful Peace. You may be seated. God, when you say peace, what exactly are you referring to? Have you ever tried to find a parking spot? Do you know how hard it is to find this year's most wanted toy? I can't find peace, God. I don't know some of the names on the Christmas cards. 
I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to go home this year. I'm not good at being alone. How do I quiet the voices in my head? How do I keep from going crazy in the silence? How do I sleep in heavenly peace when I can't even sleep? How is peace even possible in a world that is tearing itself apart? God, remind me that we are all your children. Calm my stressed out soul with your peace that passes understanding. God, breathe on us here in this moment. This here and now. Help us stop fussing and fighting. We will breathe. We will remember the light in the stable. The Prince of Peace. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. Well, it's the first Sunday in December already. That means birthday offering time. So we invite you to stand and sing Heavenly Sunshine and invite everybody who has birthdays in December to come forward at this time. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with glory divine. Heavenly sunshine, Heavenly sunshine, alleluia, Jesus is mine. Let's sing once again for Cindy. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with glory divine. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, alleluia, Jesus is mine. Actually, Cindy's up here representing Doris. Her mom, who has a birthday this month. Let's repeat our birthday verse. Many happy returns from the day of thy birth. May sunshine and gladness be given. And may their dear Father prepare thee on earth for a beautiful birthday in heaven. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Marcia Troop. I'm team leader for the Christian education group, and I help with music and other things here. Okay, on the bottom of your um, bulletin, you're going to see a tear-off sheet like this. We're asking that everyone please fill it out and tear, you know, tear it off, fill it out. Place it in the tithe box as you leave today. Uh, there's a place on the back for your prayer requests. Um, they can be confidential unless you uh, want it shared with a prayer chain, and there's a place to mark that. Please let us know um, how to help you pray with, how to pray with you. We want to welcome all visitors today. Uh, hello to those that are watching at home. If this is the first time with us, uh, please let us know you're registering. You're here by registering on site, and uh, or if you're here, marking a spot on your on your slip in your bulletin. We have a welcome gift to give you after the service or to send you if you're watching online. Uh, the children's class will be offered for the second half of the service today called Bible Fun Day. Um, and it meets in a classroom just down the hall and it's for kids 5 to 12 years old that will be dis dismissed just before the sermon. Prayer time just tonight is 6 to 6.30. We will meet in person in the library or through an audio only Zoom. Uh, you can email the church to get that link. The 2022 directory is being updated. Time flies. It just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Check, check your contact information in the main hallway as well as uh, contacts of friends and family. And Jen thanks you for that. 
Our mitten tree is up in the main hallway. Please bring hats, mittens, and gloves for the children of Moran Elementary School. We will deliver, be delivering them to them just before the kids' winter break. Cindy has an announcement. I just wanted to um, say yesterday was our cookie walk, and um, thank you for everybody that donated cookies, came out and helped set up, tear down, and just stayed for the day. Um, so far, we've made $969, and half of that will go towards the roof loan and the other half to the paper pantry. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody. There's um, still stuff that, that we're selling that's in the hallway out here. Um, there's a, a basket that you can put your donations in, and, and we'll pick them up at the end of the day. But um, thank you again for everybody that donated and came out. Thanks. And now Jeff has an announcement. Morning, everybody. Um, we're getting through this fast, it seems, this year, and there's a lot of food out there. Thank you all uh, for your generosity at this point. So we got a couple more weeks. Uh, we still need names uh, of people in the community, uh, friends and family or whatever, and uh, we can bless with these boxes or other ideas you might have of who we might give it to if we don't get enough names this year. I believe we have enough boxes, but if you have some, uh, go ahead and, uh, and bring those in. All right, so this week is uh, uh, breakfast foods, and uh, this is an oldie but a goodie, uh, breakfast champions. I ask for some food, and at time after time, you bring it in. No matter how bad the rhymes, this week, this week bring food for mornings to chew. That would be cereal, oatmeal, pancakes, to name just a few. For you are the champions, my friend. And you'll keep on giving till the end of the drive. Well, you are the champions, the breakfast champions. No time for losers, because you are the champions of breakfast food. So here's a few more to bring through the door. That could be coffee, tea, or creamer. The choice is yours. And Pop-Tarts are cool. Send kids off to school. I have the faith you'll answer the call, because you always do. For you are the champion my friend and you'll keep on giving till the end of the drive you are the champions the breakfast champions no time for losers because you are the champions of breakfast food so bring breakfast food Put them next to the noodles on the table by the wall by Jen's lovely mural. And that's all till next week. Another tune I'll unmercifully tweak. Till the knee, and I got to keep singing these songs. Till the knee says I'm done. Not sure when that will be. Maybe 2033. So please don't blame me. Thank you. Okay, this Wednesday, we are going to be having um, the paper and hygiene products pantry. Um, if you are able to volunteer to help pass out items or to pray quietly uh, for the requests that come in, just arrive at 5.30. Scrapbooking Happy Night is Friday night this week. 
This time with a meal, Tammy is providing meatballs, so if you'd like to join her, just let her know that you're coming and plan to bring a side dish to share. Saturday, big day Saturday, we are going to have both a women's and a men's breakfast. The guys are going to go to Copper Creek Cafe in Granger at 9 a.m., and the ladies will be meeting in the Shepherd's Heart Fellowship Hall at 9 a.m. Please bring a sign up in the narthex for either one today. It's the last time to sign up so the groups know how many are coming. The ladies are asked to bring a new kitchen towel wrapped inside out, tied with a ribbon and with a card attached. Uh, cost for the women is $5. Saturday night also is our movie night. It'll be shown a little bit earlier at 6 o'clock. Movie is free and so is the popcorn. So come and enjoy the special Christmas film on Sunday. We are hosting a special Christmas service on December 19th. The Willing Workers have blessed us by organizing a great lineup of music and special congregational talents and meaningful films to celebrate the birth and return of our Savior. To make room for all these great elements, we have pushed up the start time to 9.30 for the service. And there will be no life application that morning, class that morning. There will also not be uh, Bible Fun Day, but nursery will still be available. Thanks to all who purchased these beautiful poinsettias to decorate our sanctuary. You will be able to take them home with you on the 19th. Okay, let's recite our memory verses. All right, first one we learned last week. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. 1 John 4, 12. And the next one for next this week to learn. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. 1 John 4, 12. 16. At this point, I'd like to have one of the ushers bring forward the offering for today, and we will uh, bless it with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you uh, for this time that we can give back to you. We thank you that you have given us the resources that we need to live our life, and to be able to share with others. We pray that your blessing upon this money today, that it would be used to serve you and to sp spread your word. And we just thank you for all you're going to do with it. In thy name we pray. And now, the greeting wave. As our praise team comes forward to pray prepare for praise time, let's stand up and greet one another with a smile and a wave and then remain standing for worship. Hallelujah! 
Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we lift up our voices to you as a time of celebration that we can celebrate the day you were born. We thank you for this time that we're able to sing to you, Lord, and we ask you to bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's take a moment to uh, come to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We just thank you for the season. We thank you for just being able to congregate in your house, Lord. We just want to glorify your name in all that we do. We want to pray for those that cannot be here with us today. We know this is the uh, Christmas season, Lord, and we pray that you continue to put on our hearts the reason for the season and why we, uh, why we celebrate, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for all the blessings you give us. As people travel, let's, we ask that you keep them safe and you keep them uh, in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I have a hat too. It says, bah humbug, Steve. I do have a hat. So welcome everybody to Shepherd's Heart Fellowship. I would have this uh, button, but it don't fit right. <laughs> It's great to be here and have everybody here in person and online. I hope you're enjoying the Advent season. Many of you who know me for years and years and years know that I'm not a huge Christmas guy. I had just, it's just not my favorite time of the year. I've been known as a Scrooge, the Bah Humbug guy. So I thought I'd buy a festive suit to celebrate the occasion. Maybe it put me in the spirit, and I was a bit upset when the matching pants did not fit. 
Who would have thought a 2XL came in slim fit? That's just wrong. I'm sorry. That's wrong. <laughs> so it's a good thing that I still have my Bah Humbug hat to celebrate since the pants didn't fit. But today's topic, it's the second uh, Sunday of Advent, and I was given the topic of peace. So today I titled the sermon, Is There Peace? Let's take a look at things. I mean, this suit, right? It doesn't bring me happiness. It doesn't bring me joy. It doesn't bring me love, hope, or peace. It really does nothing to enhance my Christmas holiday season, but maybe bring a good laugh for people. This season should bring about joy for people, which is next week's topic, and Pastor Lynn's going to be uh, bringing us a sermon on joy. It should bring us hope. It should bring us love. It should remind us of the peace that are, that's in our lives. But does the season truly embody peace? Is there truly peace today in the world? It's hard to watch the news, isn't it? Listen to the news. Listen to talk radio. See every press conference every day, multiple times a day, and listen to everybody discuss everything that's going on. Right? The world's in turmoil. It's crazy. It's hectic. Things out there are just going nuts right now. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. There's a new strain coming out. What kind of fear will be brought about? What kind of unrest? What kind of uneasiness? What will be happening over the next couple months? We don't know. Rules keep changing. Cities are enforcing mandates, lockdowns. Things are changing depending on where you are in the country where you are in the world. There's rules for the vaccinated, rules for the unvaccinated. There's turmoil. There's fighting between the vaccinated, the unvaccinated, the doctors, the people, the scientists. Nobody knows what's going on. Fighting between the politicians. The world is in turmoil. There's turmoil between countries. We see Russia. We see Ukraine. We see China. We see Taiwan. There's rumors of war breaking out right after the holiday season. There's problems at the border. Things are in a constant state of unrest right now. Then to top all of that off, we decide to throw in the Christmas season. There's traveling, there's visiting family, there's visiting friends, there's dinners, there's presents to buy, there's shopping, getting to the mall, people everywhere, being rude to each other, fighting over the last little toy that was hot for this year. There's pressures at work. We got to get things done. It's the end of the year. We got paperwork to do. We got government forms to file. We got people coming up. People want to take vacation, holidays, travel. Everything's going on. Where's the peace? Do all these things that are happening right now, do they steal our peace? Do they take peace from our lives? How do we face everything in the news? How do we face everything in the world today? Do we just decide to tune it all out? Just not pay attention? Sometimes I think that's what we need to do. However, if we're not vigilant to know what's going on around us, to understand what's happening around us, understand what's happening in the world, understand history, how can we avoid mistakes of the past? How can we move forward as a country, as a society? How do we not repeat the bad things and the unrestful things that have happened in the past? With all these things going around us, how do we face Christmas? Are our hearts heavy? Are they filled with dread? Are they unsettled? Are we without peace? Are we without comfort in this season? Is this what the season has become for people? When I was younger, I remember being excited about Christmas. I remember, you know, gifts under the tree. It didn't matter if they were 50 cents, a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, a hundred dollar gift. There was wrapping paper everywhere. We ate too much. We ate too many sweets, cookies, everything. We sang Christmas songs. We read the Christmas story on Christmas Day. We scrimped by some years, and it was a little less. Some years were a little bit more abundant. But back then, it was about the family time. It was about getting together, the cousins gathering at grandma's house, and the aunts and the uncles, and everybody just enjoying the presence of each other. Now it's credit cards, obligations, trying to outdo last year, the price of the gift. Maybe there's only one thing under the tree that we pay off, maybe in March or April, because we really couldn't afford it. So we just put it on the plastic and we'll get to it later. I think it's a time where we must refocus. We must teach our kids Christmas is about the peace and love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We must teach them to be ambassadors of this peace. We must teach them to be ambassadors of love. We must teach people the true meaning of the season and carry it with us all year. 
not just from Thanksgiving on. It's going to be probably, you know, Halloween next year will start the Christmas season. But we should carry that love and that peace and that joy with us throughout the entire year and share it. Let's look back. The Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there's over 300 prophecies about the coming Messiah. The prophet Isaiah, more than 700 years before our Lord Jesus was born, wrote this. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or, his, or of his peace. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. In this passage, the, in prophecy of Jesus' birth, he is called the Prince of Peace. According to an article I read by Pastor Abram, he wrote the following. Peace can mean different things to different people. This would not be the case for the Old Testament Jew. To him, the word peace, shalom, meant far more than silence of, and absence of conflict. The Old Testament Jew would believe peace is a living thing, vibrant, made for the well-being of mankind. True peace has nothing to do with the situation on the outside. It has everything to do with our condition on the inside. A person can be at peace no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances, how is this possible? Because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and his rule and his kingdom will be ruled in peace. How can he do this? Because he is the righteous king, and righteousness and peace go together. Isaiah 32, 17 reads, And the work of righteousness will be peace, and the service of righteousness, quietness and confidence forever. This peace that Jesus provides is seen throughout the Bible. You see, we have a spiritual peace. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, having been justified by, ba by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have an emotional peace. John 14.27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I do not give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And we have a relational peace. Romans 12.18 if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Matthew Henry writes, he is the prince of peace. As a king, he preserves the peace, commands peace. Nay, he creates peace in his kingdom. He is our peace, and it is his peace that both keeps the heart of the people and rules in them. He is not only a peaceable prince and his reign peaceable, but he is the author and giver of all good. And all peace, all that peace which is present and future bliss to his subjects. As we move forward from the prophecies of the Old Testament, I mean, we could spend hours. There's 300 prophecies. We could spend hours going through them. Let's take a look at the birth of Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 15, we have the story of Jesus' birth. Now, we've heard the story many times, but here we see the prophecies fulfilled. So I'm just going to read verses 13 and 14. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men whom he is pleased. And the NIV actually reads, On earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. God's peace is given to those whom, whom are the recipient of God's good will and his favor. Matthew Henry writes, God's good will in sending the Messiah introduced peace in this lower world, slew the enmity that sin had raised between God and men, and resettled a peaceable correspondence. If God be at peace with us, all peace results from it. Peace of conscience, peace with the angels, peace between Jew and Gentile, peace is, out, is here put for all good, all that is good which flows from us in the incarnation of Christ. So we're here in the Christmas season. It can be a season with no peace. It can be a season that torments us, that causes anxiety for us, gives us stress, gives us discontentment. If this is how you feel, how do we reclaim the peace that Christ has given us? Well, let me suggest four ways. First, let's try not to please everyone. Luke 5, verses 15 and 16. 
But the news about him was spreading even farther, and large crowds were gathering to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. You see, everyone wanted to see Jesus. They wanted a bit of his time to hear him teach, to hear him to be healed by him. I mean, thousands of people were coming to him. They wouldn't leave him alone. Did he take time to please everybody and satisfy everyone and do everything for everyone? No. Jesus knew he needed time to refresh. He couldn't help everyone. He didn't have time or the energy to please and fulfill all their needs. During the holiday season, we can learn from this. Take time. Sneak away. Pray. Let's refresh our spirits. We don't need to do everything that everybody wants for us during this time. Second, let's quit running around everywhere. Luke twenty two fourteen 14 says, When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. The scriptures from the Lord's Supper during the Passover. Here Jesus is facing the worst day of his life. And he chooses his precious time to be with friends. He's displaying the need to relax, break bread, and spend time with family and friends in the company of those who meant the most to him. Do you spend more time focusing on running everywhere, trying to get the presents, trying to just get everything that needs to be done? So do we focus more on the presence instead of the presence of being with family and friends? Slow down. Take a breath. Enjoy the season. Let's remember the true meaning and enjoy that. Third, you don't have to be a perfect host. Luke 10, verses 38 and 42 now, as they were traveling along, he entered the village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him to her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me alone to do all the serving? Tell her to get up and help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. During the Christmas season, we all have people over, right? We gather with family, we gather with friends. Sometimes it becomes a chore, a hassle to try to prepare, to get everything just right. Jesus here tells Martha, relax, enjoy the company. Her spirit was troubled with all the work, all the preparations that needed to be done. Our peace is skipped and stripped from us as we try to prepare for our guests. The decorations, the food, is the house clean enough? Is my display better than the person that I went to last week's? Is my food better than anything I've had so far? Is everything just perfect for my guests? Can you imagine a Christmas party with friends and you say, hey, there's some leftovers in the fridge, there's some chips I think in the cabinet, there's some drinks, water, whatever. Make yourself at home, mikasa, sukasa, enjoy. I didn't prepare anything, just have fun. Can you imagine a Christmas party like that? Be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? But sometimes we just need to relax, enjoy the company, take in the joy of the company. And fourth, let's quit buying so much. Luke 12, 15 says, Then he said to them, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even, one, not, for not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. We struggle with this, right? How many times do we run into problems trying to find a gift or figure out a gift to buy someone who has everything? Do you have problems with buying a gift, or buy gifts for people on your list? Do you have problems with everyone on your list? What do they need? The key word is need. What do they need? How much stuff do we get because we want? Or just because somebody wanted to bring us a gift or give us a gift at the party. How much of that stuff do we have laying around? We have become a consumer society, a throwaway society. When are we going to be content with what we have? When do we have enough? When are we happy with what we have and not focused on what others have? When do we focus on the next best, greatest thing? Oh no, my phone's a model back. I need a new one. I got to get it. Right? My, my phone still works, but I need the new one. You know, the 12's coming out, and I only got the 11. Are we like that? I mean, I saw an article last week. I was, I was down in Georgia. I saw an article last week. 
for a rental car service that will now rent you a car by the month. Minimum five months. You can trade it in every five months. So you can have the next best, latest, greatest thing. You'll never own the car. Do we really need that? Where I can rent a car by the month so that I don't have to purchase the car and have to worry about trade-ins? So for how many is Christmas about the gifts? Is there other reasons or meanings to the season? Do we remember the Savior being born in a manger humbly to grow, to teach, to give his life for us so that we can have the ultimate gift of eternal life in heaven with him? As we get further into the Christmas season, prepare our hearts and minds. Let's focus on an inner peace. Don't let the busyness of the season steal our joy and peace that we have. Take time for yourself. Take time for family members. Take time to refresh, to pray, to reflect on our lives together. Spend some time just enjoying company, enjoying your friends, enjoying your family. What do you think about these gifts? A nice dinner with your parents. Just some time out with your friends. Maybe a service project for somebody in need. Maybe serving a local shelter. Can we find peace and joy and happiness in those gifts? Take some time this week. Contemplate what peace means to you. How do you achieve peace? Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Are we connected so deeply with him that he can provide peace in our hearts for us? Now I want to clarify. I'm not saying gift giving is bad. It's nice having something open under the tree Christmas Day. I'm Christmas shopping myself. My point is, let's not make Christmas commercial and only about the gifts. There is way much more to the season, and we must remember Christ and his gift to us. This is the most important gift. If you haven't accepted Christ today, take time to do so. Give your life to him. Allow him to become your Lord and Savior. Accept his gift of peace and everlasting life into your life. Amen. When we were singing earlier, from this vantage point, I could see out to the north. I saw this gentleman out there with this green suit on, and it made me smile as we were singing. The message you just brought forced me to ignore what you had were wearing. That's the sign of a good message. Thank you so much, friend. Let's stand and sing. It is well with my soul. Oh!
Yes, Christmas is coming. It'll be here. It'll be gone. We'll take down the trees and put away the decorations, throw them back into storage. All the presents have been unwrapped. The suspense and excitement has ended. However, does the peace and goodwill from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, linger in our hearts throughout the year and forevermore? Go in peace and spread his love to everyone you come into contact with. Amen. I've got the peace that passes. I've got, got the, the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart today. Now we've got to sing this again, but I want to hear some wares in there. You know where they belong, okay? Here we go. I've got the peace of passage understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the peace of passage understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Go with the peace of Christ this morning. Thank you.